Hey everybody, it's Julie Hester, and I'm going to talk about using functions in C++. In this video, I'm going to talk about the goals of modular programming, how to define simple functions, and when to use functions. Now the point of modular programming is we want to break up our program into small modules. Reusability means we can write the code once, test it once, and then reuse it whenever we need it instead of writing it and testing it again. Maintainability means our code is easier to understand and debug. The largest cost in software development is maintenance, so while writing our code in modules might give us a small performance hit, the benefits outweigh any drawbacks. So in order to make our programs modular, we're going to use functions. And what is a function? A function is independent code module that can be called from another function. And when we have a function, if someone else wrote a function that we're using, we may not know what it looks like inside, and that's called encapsulation. All we know is the inputs that go into the function and the output that comes out of the function. As far as what happens inside, we're not so concerned about that. And speaking of the data that goes in and out of functions, when we want to pass data to a function, we'll use parameters. And our functions can have zero or more parameters. But after our function executes, it's going to return data to us. And it can only return a single value, or in some cases, nothing at all. So here are a couple of functions that we've seen. Well, the first one is just main. And whenever we write a program in C++, we create a main function. And it's a function like the other functions that we're going to write. Out to the left of the word main is int for integer. And that means main has to return an integer. Another function we've used is pal when we want to raise a base to an exponent. The pal function has two doubles as parameters going into the function, and it returns a double. So after the function executes, we will get a new number back from the function, and then we can save that function in a variable and use it later. So when we write a function, we have four primary parts. First is the function name. So if we write a program that only has main, main is our function, that's the name of it. And right next to the name of our function, we'll use parentheses to include a parameter list. And in this example of main, there are no parameters, so the parentheses are empty. Then the code between the curly braces or the code block is my function body. And finally, int, the data type to the left of my function name, is the return type. And that means this function must return an integer. Some functions don't return data. With these functions, we'll use void as a placeholder for the return data type. And we don't have to have a return statement because we're not returning anything. So here's an example of a function with no data. This function is named display menu. It has no parameters. And void out next to display main indicates that this function is not going to return any values. Inside the function body, it prints out four statements and then it ends. some functions do return data, and when they do, as we've just seen with main, we'll specify a return data type in the function header. When we are returning data, 
then we will need to use a return statement as the last line in our function body and we'll return whatever data type that function is required to return. Now one thing that trips up people sometimes is that functions can only return one value. And sometimes people will write something like this, return 5 comma 12, and you can often get this past your compiler, but this isn't really doing what you want. We can't make our function return more than one value, and if we have a need for something like this, then we need to approach the problem a different way. So here's an example of a function that returns an integer. The function is named user selection, and again, it has no parameters. But now instead of void, we have int next to the name user selection. Inside the function body, we have an integer variable defined. We execute some code where we set a value to that integer. And then finally, at the end of the function, we're going to return the variable selection an integer variable. Now, how do we call a function? Our function call is the statement that's going to cause that function to execute. We can pass data to the function, and the function can return a value. If the function does return a value, then we can assign that value to a variable. So here, I'm going to raise the number 2.1 to the third power, or cube it, by calling the pal function. The pal function will execute, do the calculation, and return a double to me, and I'll save that value in my variable cube. So here is an example of a program that has two function calls. The first function call is a call to the display menu function. That function had no parameters and no return type, so we just put the name of the function and follow it with empty parentheses. The second function, user selection, also has no parameters, but it returned an integer. So we're going to take whatever is returned by that function and save it in our integer variable selection. So in order to do this, we'll have the name of the function on the right-hand side of the equal sign or assignment operator. After that function executes, that value will then be assigned to my variable selection. All of these functions we've been looking at don't have parameters, but we can create a function with parameters. And each parameter is going to require two things. We need to know its data type, and we need to give it a variable name. Whenever we call a function that has parameters or arguments, whatever values we are, have in our function call and are passing to our function, those values will be copied to the parameters. So here's a function with two parameters. It has a parameter of a data type string, and it has another parameter of double. So this function, called print receipt, shows the two parameters by listing them inside the parentheses. And we'll just separate each parameter by a comma and we can continue to list however many parameters we need. Now when this function is called, whatever value is put as the first value or the first parameter in the function call will be copied into item. The second value in our function call will be copied to our variable or parameter double. Once we're inside the function, we can treat item and treat double just like they're any other variable. We just aren't going to define them again because they've already been defined in our function header. So where do we put functions in our program? 
The simplest answer is we can put the entire function definition above main in our program file. And that will work okay if we're not wanting to share that function with other programs. A lot of people will choose to put functions below main in the file, and whenever you do that, you have to have a prototype defined before main. The functions here that I've been showing you aren't using this method. They're all being put above main. And then finally, when I am wanting to share a function between different programs or processes, I'll build that function definition in its own CPP file, create a header file with the function signature, and then include that header file in my program. So now that you know how to create a function, when should you use one? Well, anytime we have repeated code in our program, that's a good candidate for becoming a function. Also, sometimes we'll have a long code segment that's doing a lot of different things, and we may just want to break that up. We can move each task of the code segment into a separate function, and now that code segment will be modular. And a good guideline for this is we don't really want our functions to be longer than about 30 lines of code. If they're getting longer than that, then we probably have too many things going on in the function, and we probably need to break it up into multiple functions. So that's how you can create functions and why you want to use functions and a little bit about modular programming.